Hello everybody, it's Kobus here from Cape Town and I'm doing a video on two indicators today for George and Global Forex Institute. I'm going to do two indicators, uh, stochastics, which is an overbought and oversold signal. It is not a divergence. Please, it's not a divergence indicator. I'm going to show you what divergence is. I'm going to teach you that quickly. And then I'm going to do the relative strength indicator, one of my favorites where I'm doing Elliott wave counts. Um, it shows me the strength of the market or the specific cycle. It shows me um, how I can use it in price patterns. And it's not an overbought and an oversold signal, yet it gives me market um, extremes. Looking at this chart quickly, um, there's a few charts that I'm going to use here, but uh, let's start with this one. It's the New Zealand Canadian dollar monthly. Look at the peaks here. That shows us market exhaustion. Market exhaustion. Always the points which is the highest or the lowest is market exhaustion. It's not overbought. If you tell me that is overbought, then you must tell me why the signal is above 80% and you say it's overbought, you're going to sell it, but the market turns around from roughly, let's make it 8,000 to 9,300. So 1,300 per run, where the indicator shows me overbought, obviously something is wrong. Either it's not an overbought indicator or you are wrong. And I choose to say, we as traders we don't use that real strength indicator correctly. It's not an overbought, oversold signal. All right, it's a market extremes, market exhaustions. All right, so let's define divergence. Divergence is when at the bottom we've got a lower low, but on the indicator it's a higher low. That is divergence. When going to the market at the top, we can see price going higher high, but the indicator show us a low high. That is divergence. That is above the 80%. The market give us divergence. We know the market is exhausted. We can expect a turn. All right. There's no reason to sell, but we can expect the market to be exhausted there. If you want to tell me that this is an overbought and oversold signal, again, I'm going to take you to the monthly of the Japanese yen, and you said this is the two overbought signals. There's two of them. The market is going to turn, and that was exactly on 102 when you suddenly say you want to sell, and the market is now at 120. That's that's not very clever to do it. All right. The only reason is that you want to use it as an overbought and oversold signal. It cannot be used like that. Let's use it in price patterns. I used this one last week. A friend of mine said he's, um, he wants to sell this market. We agreed we want to sell this market uh, and that the market is going to, to make a lower low year. I still agree with that. And I said to him this is a triangle and I explained to him that the RSI showed us that it's a triangle. It confirmed. And we know that the triangle in a bear market is a trend continuation pattern. So that I don't think the market, I don't plan the market to make a bullish breakout here. I would rather sell at the top for a new low below this low. I would rather target this lows. And the strength of the market, we're going to look at on the RSI. We're going to put in some horizontal lines. And we're going to see that the price action stayed in the, in the triangle, the market box, and my indicator also stayed in the, tri in the market box. So that's the indication that that was a triangle. I expect the market to come down and break the lows here. Can you see now how we use the RSI to show you the extremes? You can look always at the extremes and see that the market is getting exhausted. If you get divergence, it's a much better indication. You get divergence, you can start to plan your trade and to sell or buy. Another trick that I've learned, we're going to add the stochastic just now, but just quickly look at the stochastic and we're going to see how we're going to use it. Stochastic is an indicator that will show you overbought and oversold, yes, but I'm only using overbought and oversold signals in certain markets and I'm going to tell you now how I'm going to do that.
I want to use overbought signals in a bear market. I want to use oversold signals in a bull market. And why is that? Let's get our trend line here. It's a bear market, so the trend line is at the top. There's actually two trend lines, so let's put in two trend lines there. I'm not going to use any of the bottom price action here on the stochastic. I'm only going to look at the top. Why? Because I'm in a bear market, I only use overboard signals. The market is in a bear market and the stochastic is overboard and it crosses above the 80% you sell in the direction of the trend. Many traders want to buy it. They say this is over oversold. They want to buy. I tell you, cannot buy. It is a bear market. Same at this instance here. The market came up. We're still in a bear market. Market gave us an overbought signal. We're selling. We're not buying down here. We are selling up there because we are bearish. There's another bear market. Let's look at this. This is only a four hour chart. If you want to buy here at the bottoms, because you say this is oversold, you're going to burn your fingers. You see that market is just coming down and down and down. When the market is bearish, you only look at the tops of the stochastics and use it as a sell signal. The same with the bull market. If the market is going up, your trend line is at the bottom, and you will only use your stochastic for buy signals. See how you can burn your fingers if you tell me that this market is overbought, you want to sell? Look at the market just going up, up. So rather buy at the bottoms. Buy at the oversold signals. Yeah, there's crosses. Crosses against the trend line. In the up market, you buy that crosses. You buy. Do you see how we buy in the oversold areas and we sell in the overbought signals? That's how to use stochastic and that's how I use the RSI. Not the other way around. Let's do quickly, let's add the two together and I'm going to show you how we're going to use this to indicate this for even more accuracy. Okay, RSI, there you are. What you can do if you put the two indicators together, many use a MACD, that's no problem with that. I use the RSI, I'm more comfortable with it. I only put in a 50% 50, 50 line there. And I know, as long as the market is above that red line, it's a bullish market. The strength is in favor of the bulls. Relative strength indicator, above 50% for the bulls. Below 50%, bear market, strength is to the bears. Alright, so let's go test it. Do you see the market going up here? Yeah? Why is the market going up? My indicator is at the top. Which of the stochastic turns will I use? I only will use the buys. There and there. I've got nothing to do with this. That is an uh, overboard signal. In a bullish market, you cannot. Then the market breaks down. You can see the price action became down the trend line. Also my strength indicator go in favor of the bears. Now we're looking for sell signals. So where's my sell signals? When my stochastic crosses, there, boom. We are in that trade, we are selling. Now what do we do when the RSI is at the bottom and my indicator is at the bottom and it shows over oversold signals? We're doing nothing because we're in a bear market. We leave it. We leave it. We're getting out only of those trades when a higher high is made or my trend line is broken or the RSI breaks above 50%. There on that note we can get out. Alright, there was a big uh, return there but we, we got out just before that big candle there. We got out this market. Our, our resistance got broken. Our trend line got broken. RSI is going to the upside. We're getting out of that trade. Right, let's go to another example. We're going to this one again. Bullish market, trend line is up. We're only going to look at buy, so we're only going to look at over sold, uh, oversold signals here at the stochastics. And there's many, many 
uh, buy signals here against the trend line in the bullish market. Uh, the only reason where I will not buy is where the RSI makes an extreme peak that will make me cautious. Uh, there's an example on the Swiss franc of that um, at the moment I think. Let's quickly use it too. Immediately I put in my 50% or as close as possible. At this stage we know we are in a bull market. Why are we in a bull market on the Swiss franc? We broke the trend line we're against the resistance there, but our strength in Canada already shows us that it is going bullish. Alright, strength is in favor of the bulls. I'm a little bit weary here, a little bit of a wake up because we've got a market exhaustion on our indicator. And we see a divergence. Another thing that you see, there's the, there's the peak again. Watch out when the market makes strength peaks like this. This is exhaustions market and we can see there we are making lower highs on the indicator and we're making higher highs on price action. So that is divergence. I'm very very weary here. Let's look at this pennant or ending diagonal. Is it confirmed on my relative strength indicator? Yes. My price action is staying in the box. My indicator is staying in the box. Um, this is still a pennant, it didn't break out yet, and a pennant can be a trend reversal pattern. And if I add now my stochastic, I see there's still nothing going on here. We, remember, we're still in a bull market, we're still buying. The only reason that I will not buy at this moment is that peak on the weekly makes me a little bit skeptical. There is divergence on the on the daily already. Uh, it's this market I think is close to exhaustion. So uh, be on the lookout for it. So a little bit of market analysis. I think the US dollar is close to close to its exhaustion against the Swiss franc, obviously against the euro then. Let's quickly look at the other trades. If the guys want to trade next week, let's add our relative strength indicator to the Australian dollar. Let's see what the market or the indicators tells us. Uh, and please, guys, use the use the indicators not as your alpha and omega. Do all your analysis without the indicators. Please use the indicators as confirmation. I only um, teach the people to can use it as confirmation. The price action and the market price must show you already where the market is. Bull bear. Um, is it close to a turn and then your stochastic and your strength indicator will just confirm it. Okay, looking at the Aussie dollar, quickly some analysis here. Uh, we see we're still in a bear market. We're not going to sell at this, uh, we're not going to buy at this stage. We only want to sell. Um, you see there's the bear market and the stochastic there made the cross. We break that trend, broke that trend line, we're short in that market. And we can see we're close to exhaustion here. The strength is in favor of the bears again. My 50% trend line is in there. And I see both indicators very low. It can still go a bit lower, but I will be on the lookout now for, for turns. It's not a buy yet, uh, but I th this market is showing that it is exhausted at the bottom. So that's the two indicators, the stochastic and the RSI. I hope you guys learned something, how to add the two together very important discipline uh, and the rules of the two in a bull market you only look for oversold signals on those stochastics and a bear market you only look for sell signals and overbought signals on the stochastics this RSI will show you about 50% is in favor of the bulls you can only buy and if it's below the 50% it's in favor of the bears we're only selling and where the market extremes are I will show caution to not get in the trade because when I get the divergence on the RSI only then I know the market is ready to turn. So that is my lesson. I hope you learned something good. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in the mentoring classes soon. Uh, let's talk on the SA Trader Lounge and thank you George. Thank you Global Forex Institute. Goodbye.